Since the release of the first game, players have been speculating about the identity of Gwyn's firstborn and the reason why he was banished from Lordran. But with this video and the help of Dark Souls 3, I'll finally be able to give you some concrete and impartial answers. Let's start from what we know from previous games. Gwyn's firstborn was a god of war, probably one of many, as in his day war was a common practice, especially the one against the dragons, thus easily allowing the existence of multiple warlords and their involvement in the fight with these ancient magical beings, and the firstborn was surely no exception to that. Still that was not his official title. What I mean is that in the world of Dark Souls, every main character's official denomination is made of his name plus his title, the official display of one's status. Therefore, being a god of war is an attribute of the firstborn, not his legitimate position. He was in fact the prince of sunlight, successor to Gwyn in his role as god of sunlight. This title grants him the ability to control the power of sunlight, which is in this universe not associated directly to fire, but rather to lightning and storm, the natural manifestation of this gift. This should not surprise, because if we think about what the sun means in our society, we can easily understand how this translates into Dark Souls world. In our physical world, the natural condition is darkness, in the sense that if no external source of energy is applied, all we superficially get is total darkness. Therefore, the sun is the opposite of the nature's based condition. On the other hand, Dark Souls' natural equilibrium was in the greyness of the ancient world. What broke this static condition were the four souls, which behave more like a separation of the nature into a four opposite directions rather than an opposition to nature itself, but what looks like to bring contrast to it is lightning. If you think about it, lightning brings light into the grey clouds that shroud it, the same way our sun brings light into our darkness, energyless world. Therefore, it makes sense for a Dark Souls universe to associate the sun to the power of lightning, a rather poetical image, if you ask me. So Gwyn's firstborn was able to wield and control the power of sun, which came in handy as it turns out that dragons are vulnerable to it. In general, that of the Dragon Slayer was an important role in this period. This would also explain why, according to his armor, Arnstein was the highest ranking between the four knights of Gwyn. In fact, the Dragon Slayer armor boss suggests that Arnstein's equipment influenced also the one of the other Dragon Slayers. His weapon of choice was the cross spear, imbued with lightning and very effective against dragons. It's likely that the Thirstborn also used one of these weapons, being he depicted wielding one at the Altar of Sunlight in Lordran. Here he was cherished by the Warriors of Sunlight, a covenant of warriors over whom the Thirstborn has been watching. Still, I'm not sure if he was the one who founded this covenant or if it rather was built around him. Because as far as we know, it's made only of human or undeads, therefore I think the latter is more likely. But that's just my opinion. Even though he seemed to have had a pretty important role inside Lordran society, being he the prince and a dragon-slaying god of war, at some point he was sent into exile and stripped of his title by Gwyn, while all clues hinting at his existence have been destroyed or removed. Only few crumbled stages remain, leaving us at least some clues about his appearance. Following the timeline, it actually looks like that the Thirstborn left Lordran only after his father's sacrifice, because from the description of the Sunlight Blade Miracle, we learn that he left it on the coffin of his father as a farewell, the suggesting in which order events must have played out. Now, with this final event, we lose every trace of him, or at least until Dark Souls 3. Here, in the secret area of Archdragon Peak, it's possible to encounter a very familiar looking boss. Riding a drake, this divine warrior literally battles us in the middle of a storm, in what is probably one of the most epic fights of the entire franchise. Once we manage to slay his drake companion, the king will claim his soul, as was the custom in the Age of Gods. Ornstein did the same with Moth, after all. I can already tell you that this boss is Gwyn's firstborn. 
it's undeniable that given his size, power and fighting skill, the Nameless King can easily be considered to be of divine origin, while his appearance and dexterity with the power of lightning all remind us of Gwyn. A closer look at his headgear reveals us that buried amidst long strands of bristling ash, we can find Gwyn's golden crown, or at least a copy of it. His bracelets are also described to closely resemble those of the First Lord. Actually, we can find them also on the statue of the Sun's Firstborn, together with the sleeves of his tunica. But concrete evidence of his identity is given us by the description of his sword spear. First of all, it's said to be the earliest form of cross spear, the same type of weapon also Ornstein used, who was already known to be the prince's bodyguard, thus making their same choice of weapon appear reasonable. But it's when it says that it is imbued with lightning, of which he was the heir, that it removes all doubts we still might have had. But going on, the Sacred Oath Miracle states that This is the tale of the Sun's Firstborn, his faithful first knight, and the brave dragon slayer who served them both. The way it is written is a bit misleading, as one might think that it talks about Gwyn's son, a knight, and a dragon slayer. But you can notice that his faithful first knight is not an element of a list, as it is followed by a coma before an end, but rather the description of the subject before it, which would be Gwyn's firstborn. So the literal interpretation would become, this is the tale of Gwyn's firstborn, who was his father's faithful first knight, and a brave dragon slayer who served both Gwyn and his son. Of course, the mentioned dragon slayer is Ornstein, captain of the four knights of Gwyn, as the Leo Ring confirms us that he was also the first knight of the Thirstborn. Gwyn's son was a god of war, so while Gwyn was the official lord of his knights, his firstborn commanded them in battle, leading the charge of his father's army, a practice that comes from our medieval ages where it was common for the king's male child to lead his army or part of it in battles. Actually, the game itself tells us that Gwyn's firstborn and Ornstein had a connection, because while reading the description of Ornstein's armor, we read that he left the land in search of the Nameless King, and he must have found it, as this armor can be found right after the boss fight. I will discuss why he was looking for him and what happened after he found the Nameless King in another video entirely dedicated to Ornstein. It's worth noticing though that his body is not here. While his armor pieces can be found at different locations along the path to the boss, suggesting that he might have abandoned them there. Finally, being he called the Nameless King is an additional demonstration of him being Gwyn's son, because we said that the latter was stripped of his title, which we also said to be the same as taking his name. Of course, some of you might argue why then was he called King? But if you think back, we also said that he left Lordran after his father had already sacrificed himself. So for dynastical reasons, he was still the firstborn and therefore the official king of the kingdom. The reason he was exiled is also clear. The nameless king was once a dragon slaying god of war, before he sacrificed everything to ally himself with the ancient dragons. This of course justifies the reaction of his father, given the importance of his action. So hoping that I have convinced you about the identity of the Nameless King, there are still two questions that need to be answered. Why did he sacrifice his life and his family to ally with the dragons, and what has he been doing since then? Admittedly, I didn't find any answer to the first question, so if you'd like to write me your interpretation, I might add it in a list down in the description to keep the most likely reasons summarized to ease their consultation. Regarding the other point though, I might have an explanation. But a very shaky one. Of course siding with the dragons didn't change the end of the war. Dragons lost, and most of them were killed in that very fight by the gods, with the help of Seath Betrayal. So looking at Arch Dragon Peak and the cult surrounding this place, it looks to me like a vault for all the last surviving descendants of the dragons. Drakes and mostly serpents hide here, but also some stone lizards. Also, the description just before the Battle of the Nameless King says that it must not be wrung by those part of the Dragon Covenant, suggesting that in the end, the Nameless King was the protector of this sanctuary, and no one had made it past him, as is suggested by the description of the Storm Curved Sword, which states that the King had fought beside the Storm Drake in countless battles, but only we managed to kill them both eventually. In this end card, I will quickly address those who still might think that Ferem, or perhaps Solaire, are Gwen's firstborn. 
about the letter I'll make an in-depth video, so stay tuned for that. But on the other hand, no video is planned about Ferem for now, so let's talk about him. He can't be Gwyn's firstborn, there are no facts, item description or dialogues that would state it. Yes, he was a god of war, but like I said, the game writes for both that they are, and I quote, a god of war. So if that was his serial title and he was the only one out there, why wasn't he addressed as the god of war? Furthermore, Gwyn's son was the heir of sunlight, while there is no element in all the trilogy that says that Ferem was able to control lightning. Then we have the problem with the Ferossa Lion Knights, which have nothing to do with the Warriors of Sunlight, over whom the game says the first one was still watching. And finally, he was nameless, his name had been taken from his father, so why should his name be Ferem? Or at least it would make much more sense for it to begin with Gwyn, like those of his brother and sister. Okay, some argued that he might have took it afterwards, but that isn't stated anywhere making it pure fanfiction. Furthermore, how would you then explain the name is King in this theory? Of course, I'm not saying that I am absolutely right. What I'm trying to say is that before telling me, dude, you're wrong, Gwyn's firstborn is Ferem, and not even explaining why that is so. So try to answer to all the points I list above, supported by concrete evidence, before mentioning this theory again. So that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, I'll briefly write in the description why I decided to make a new version of it, so if you have been wondering about it, give it a read. Also I invite you to check out the other lore videos I've made and to come back to this channel for new ones coming soon. So have a nice day guys!